Okay, records video up to close of trade Thursday, 2nd of April 2020. Do hope you are doing well. So this video is something a little bit different, going to talk about swing trading crude oil. We had an explosive move in the crude oil market today, and I want to talk about a swing trade that I took with a classic setup. Same indicators, the better indicators that I use for day trading the E-mini, you can use them on all markets, all time frames, and I want to show you how you can use them to swing trade different futures markets. So there's three points I want to make uh, in this video. The first one is about news. Uh, the second one is the importance of tick charts. And the third one is kind of typical risk reward money management kind of rules that you might use in your swing trading. So the first one is just to talk about news. If at all possible, try and switch off the news. I'm, I'm a news junkie. I love particularly Zero Hedge. There are a couple of you know kind of feeds that I get into every day and I love catching up and finding what is going on. It is very difficult to stop the news from kind of biasing your opinion. I just want to show you some of the articles that were in Zero Hedge. Zero Hedge, love you. Nothing wrong with your content whatsoever. But uh, just some of the titles that were being used over the last two or three days uh, that would make you think the last thing you wanted to do is take a long trading crude. So, for example, this is on the 30th of March, just a couple of days ago. Texas or Canada, where will oil hit zero dollars first? Uh, next day, 31st of March, it's happening. Oil producers are now paying clients as Wyoming sour price turns negative. Then we have same day, 31st of March, after worst quarter ever, WTI extends losses on massive crude and ca gasoline build. Then uh, the 1st of April, how low could US oil production actually go? And then the last article, again, 1st of April, WI tumbles to $19 handle after biggest crude build since 2016. So all of those articles would lead you to believe, you know, the last thing you wanted to do was be considering a long uh, crude trade, but the charts will show you differently. So um, the next thing thing I want to talk about is uh, settings for swing trading, different markets, and particularly tick bar settings uh, that I have for different uh, markets. So as an illustration, I'm going to show you a 60-minute chart. 60-minute charts are always a good kind of time frame. People like 60-minute or kind of four-hour charts of kind of swing trading. I like 60 minutes as an indicator of what's kind of going on. It allows you to kind of zero down um, into what's happening during the day and night, uh, but it's not uh, too high level. So it's kind of a good kind of intermediate chart. Problem with it is not a tick chart, so it doesn't give you quite the information that you need. So let me show you what the better indicators look like on the 60 minute chart. First of all, on the right hand side, we have better sine wave, which is all price based. It calculates the cycles that are happening in the prices, price bars uh, in three different time frames, low, intermediate and highest time frame, and then plots support and resistance lines on the price bars themselves based on those that cycle activity. Then breaks of support and resistance give us trend moves. Downtrends are in white, uptrends and strength in red. Left-hand side, everything to do with volume. On the bottom of the chart, we've got better momentum, which shows us the volume momentum, buying and selling volume momentum. And then on the price bars themselves, we have blue price bars for professional activity, yellow price bars for amateur activity, and those calculations are based on the average trade size. So first of all, on the cycles, you can see we've been in a huge downtrend in crude. This feels like forever since $50 where we broke support in the highest time frame and we're coming down and down and down and we've a series of pullback to end of trends, pullback to end of trends and certainly coming into uh, last night today's trade we did have a little pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame, a little pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame and then we got a break above resistance into the subtrend. So everything kind of looks nice there but uh, I'll show you the tick bar chart which I think is superior. And then on better pro-am and better momentum here on the 60 minute chart. Yes, you can definitely see we had exhaustion uh, last couple of days and you can see some amateur down bars going on here. Let me just show that in a little bit more detail. So we have blue professional down bars, they're buying that. Amateur down bars here, uh, saying the amateurs are going short, kind of interestingly, right, 
when all those kind of news stories were kind of coming out saying oil's going to zero dollars, uh, exhaustion cell kind of comes in, and then the blue professional bars happen as we're having the spike up there. So that was what was going on on the 60-minute chart. I think the tick bar chart is better, and here is a handy way of figuring out what the tick bar setting uh, you ought to use. And summarized in a spreadsheet for uh, the better indicator subscribers, you can go to this. It's part of your account uh, kind of settings, and I have a whole bunch of markets here and the tick bar charts that I prefer for day trading and swing trading. And what I'm going to show you here is the tick count per 24 hours and per hour for crude oil. Typically, over the last year, there are 367,000 ticks, that's trades, in a 24-hour period on uh, the CL contract, the crude futures. And that translates to about 15,000 trades or ticks per hour. So that is a rule of thumb what I use for my swing trading chart. Uh, so I use about 15,000 ticks uh, as the setting for the tick bar. And if you were day trading crude, if you wanted to do that, uh, that's been very popular over the last kind of several years, uh, you just divide that by nine or 10 roughly to uh, give you a day trading tick bar setting. So that's about 1,500 tick bars. But I don't do that. I'm just using the 15,000 tick bar chart uh, for the crude chart. So again, all it's done is just calculating the number of trades typically over the last year per 24-hour period. And to get it roughly equivalent, like a 60-minute chart, just dividing by 24, 24 hours in a day, and then just rounding off. So 15,000 ticks for uh, the tip bar chart setting. So let's go back to this chart and let's change this now from a 60-minute chart to a tip bar chart. And what we want is 15... Thousand. I usually use 5,000 bars back. That gives me plenty of back history. Uh, so the indicators have plenty of time to kind of roll through their calculations and do that fine. Uh, let's just load that chart. Okay, bingo, there we go. The uh, data is loaded and the indicators have recalculated. So exactly the same uh, indicators. I haven't changed those at all. Exactly the same settings. And let's see how things have changed. This is the 15,000 tip bar chart compared to the 60 minute chart. Yes, definitely in this huge kind of downtrend uh, that we had. And you can see here, the setup was a lot neater. So we had a little pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame, showing us a little bit of a left shoulder and an inverted head and shoulders. Then we had pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame, syncing up with cyclical support on the highest time frame. So in terms of cycles kind of coming together, that's really nice. End of a downtrend on the lowest time frame, end of a downtrend on the intermediate time frame, support on the highest time frame kind of comes in and we start to set up. But why should you be going long at that point? I mean, we had you know some strength kind of coming in into the market here. Why not take this long trade at this point here? Why did we wait to this one? So a couple of things. So if we look at the uh, better momentum chart and better pro-am, you can see what's going on here. So we definitely have exhaustion sell kind of down here at the lows. We had it down here at 20 bucks. This is mid last month or towards the end of last month. Exhaustion sell going on down here. We came back into that low again. Exhaustion sell at this point, bullish divergence, and we've gone flush and flush, and then another exhaustion sell. Uh, signal here. So we're definitely kind of exhausted in terms of selling on the downside. And then you can start to see at that lows, all these blue professional bars kind of picking it up. There we go. A little pick up here. That's a little kind of V reversal on that dip down. There are the professionals kind of picking it up down here on this little sequence down here. More blue professional bars picking it up at the lows. We know the professionals are buying because the professionals buy low and sell high. And so on dips down here, when you see moves like that at the lows, uh, they're getting into the market. They're not getting out. So at this point here, no blue professional bars. The professionals weren't selling out at that point. You had um, amateur up bars up here. Amateurs tend to buy breakouts and sell breakdowns. They love kind of trading uh, kind of um, those types of moves. And so when you see amateur bars here kind of expecting, oh, you know, we've had a rally, yeah, it's going to continue. No, it kind of fades and kind of goes the other way. So blue professional bars down at the lows bought this breakout. 
and then they were taking profits here just as the amateurs were buying the breakout no reverses goes the other way so this is the sequence here it's all the exhaustion sells on the downside with flush patterns and bullish divergence patterns kind of going on we know that we're kind of corrected on the downside i like it when those things kind of line up it's all happening at a similar type of price point around that 20 dollars. we're just pushing and pressing into there then the blue professional bars step in on the lows those are the professionals kind of buying in and then we have a little bit of re via reversal here you can see just like uh, this one here blue professional bars picking it up at the lows and then anxiously buying everything that's stacked in the queue here bang as they're getting on board at 21 dollars and we know they're getting on board and the trend is changing because we start to break resistances on the upside this whole move on the way down no resistances broken they're all supports being broken supports in all the intermediate and lowest time frames being and that's how we color our trends on the downside as soon as we as we start breaking up above resistances we're breaking that shows the market is strong and we're breaking into an uptrend here so there we go that is the setup it's a classic setup it's like the five step setup that i talk about works on all kind of time frames all markets i do prefer tick bar charts because you get this kind of extra information uh, from the professionals it's just more accurate minute bars hourly bars daily bars yes they, it still kind of works but it's more accurate on uh, the algorithm is more accurate on a, a tick chart so there we go that's the trade setup at that point so what was i looking at when i was trading this last night so i saw 2172 that was my entry it kind of jumped in there at that level and so when i'm looking at this i'm looking at a particular price point uh, for a stop first of all and i choose 1980 which is kind of below that little sequence those blue professional bars if it kind of goes below those blue professional bars i should really be out and looking for another kind of setup kind of later on but so 1980 was my stop put in that and on swing trading i'm using a two to one kind of um, profit target to stop loss so two times that distance uh, from the entry point to the stop loss above uh, my entry gives me a profit target of uh, 2568 I think it actually was that's what I ended up I think I maybe inputted incorrectly into my my um, IB screen because I think I calculated 57 and I ended up putting in 67 or 68 anyway I was out at 68 so that's what uh, kind of happened but anyway so that was where the entry uh, was taken 2172 just as that trade was starting to set up here and, and break out at that point there so I'm using a stop loss of two to one and then you calculate the number of contracts you want to trade based on the risk that you're taking on your account I usually on my swing trades calculate based on a 10% uh, kind of risk on my trades there's all kinds of different views on money management and optimal F and all these kind of uh, different ways of approaching money management choose the one that you're you know most comfortable with at the moment I'm kind of comfortable with um, a 10% uh, risk return uh, on 10 percent risk 20 percent return on my swing trades that's what I'm using on my account um, and then put in your orders and leave them there in IB uh, interactive brokers using a bracket order of a uh, stop loss and a profit taker uh, kind of order there and then I was lucky enough to wake up for me in the morning at 5 a.m and uh, see that the market had taken me out through my profit target up here so it was an unusual day granted uh, I was thinking when I took this trade that this would be like a three or a four day trade but you know we had some particular news items that came out that you know made this uh, trade work out very quickly um, so out of this for each contract traded that was just under a four thousand dollar profit so very happy with that but again you know it was a little bit unusual that it happened so quickly I was expecting this to to work out over three or four days um, and I would have kept my stop and my profit target at exactly the same spots kind of going on there so the professionals that are bought in at the lows over here uh, definitely I'm sorry at uh, 26 to 28 they've been unloading some contracts there and on this push back up above 25 you can see they've unloaded some contracts there and we're kind of sinking back down so I don't think it's all over for crude we've just had had exhaustion buy and bearish divergence but we're going to come back in and test and find where in this zone you know the next kind of blue professional down bar kind of comes in where the professionals are starting to think that that's an attractive price to step back into the market 
So there we go. A couple of things uh, to do with swing trading, uh, any kind of futures market, but in this case, it's kind of crude. First of all, uh, suggestion number one, try and turn off the news or not let it uh, impact your decision making. Number two, tip bar charts are kind of superior to time-based charts. They give you more information, particularly in terms of seeing what the professionals are doing. Uh, and thirdly, you know, choose your money management rules that kind of fit and work with you. For me, two to one risk return uh, and a 10 percent of account uh, risked per swing trade uh, seems to be working for me. There we go. I hope that video was helpful to you.